Increasing chances for tropical development this week as strong energy rolls through the ITCZ and into the Atlantic. Meanwhile, a record-breaking heat wave ongoing for many, but relief on the way, which also could spark energy in the tropics. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Saturday. Hopefully, we're having an all right July 26th. And yeah, still a good bit to talk about there. The tropics going to be the main discussion uh, as we are in uh, hurricane season, but we are going to touch on that heat wave when relief is going to arrive from it and how funnily enough that relief also could help to kind of enhance the chance of tropical development. So a lot going on and a lot that we're going to discuss in today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Jerry. I can actually catch me on air tonight at 6 as well as at 10 in Charlotte and then at 11 on ABC Columbia, our sister station. So definitely check me out if you live locally or download the WCCB Charlotte app to watch me there. Now, also, I will ask if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. So you're up to date with these changing models and you'll be the first to find out when I upload and also consider following me on my other social media accounts linked in the description. All right, folks, let's dive on into things and start with that water vapor loop, one of the go-tos that I love to use on the channel here. And uh, you can definitely see this big uh, kind of area of moisture. We do have a couple of them, one down into Central America that uh, generally speaking would be an area to watch for tropical development. But luckily right now, enough wind shear out there that's keeping that from uh, organizing into anything on the Atlantic side, although it could spark development out on the Pacific side of Central America. Meanwhile, still dealing with a lot of dry air out here into the main development region. That's why things have been quiet so far this year at least uh, out into the central Atlantic, but uh, that likely to change as we move ahead into time. And of course, we will be talking about that. Now, back home, a big ridge of high pressure parked over the eastern United States, bringing record heat and humidity uh, for many of us in the southeast. Uh, luckily, though, we are seeing some showers and storms on the northern side of that ring of fire here in a belt from uh, the Great Lakes over through the Rust Belt, definitely uh, getting some relief. Uh, but uh, if you're down south in the mid-Atlantic, uh, especially the Carolinas, boy, oh boy, is it hot. Hot. In fact, we hit 95 before the noon hour in Charlotte, uh, and uh, the triple digits look to be a pretty likely theme over the coming days. Now, let's go ahead and switch on over to look at the tropics a little more in depth, and uh, let's start with why things have been quiet, and then see how that's going to change and how it could spark our next name storm. One thing we have plenty of is warm ocean temperatures, warm enough to support a storm of some kind, whether that be a tropical storm or uh, potentially even a hurricane. Anything you see in yellow or higher on that scale to the right, uh, those are water temperatures that are warm enough to support that tropical development, especially warm down into the Gulf right now. We've got uh, sea surface temperatures up near 90 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and uh, obviously that's like bathtub water, and uh, that's one of the reasons the Gulf has been such a hot spot over the past couple of years is those very warm sea surface temperatures. And uh, yeah, sure enough, they're here once again for 2025. Now elsewhere, running about average uh, in the sea surface temperature department. Uh, so nowhere else is anonymously warm. So that is good news. But still, you don't need to be above average uh, in July out into the Atlantic to support tropical development. So definitely seeing plenty of warm ocean content here for any sort of tropical wave to take advantage of. Now, one thing that luckily right now has been hindering development is that dry air I mentioned. You saw it on satellite. You could see it here on the brand new G. GFS model run, all that brown out into the Atlantic. Yeah, that's dry air coming off of the Sahara of Africa and helping to suppress things for now. That will change, though, as we look ahead. Elsewhere, uh, we've got some drier air also even over the Caribbean and over uh, portions of the southeast coastline, helping to keep things at bay. So generally speaking, right now, this has been one of the key mechanisms to keep things quiet is dry air and sinking air. We've got an MJO phase right now, at least, that uh, would favor less tropical development in the Atlantic. However, once more, that will be changing as we look ahead towards August, a pocket of rising air likely to move over this part of the world, and uh, that could definitely enhance the chances of development. Another thing helping us out right now is wind shear. We've got some belts of stronger wind shear. Anywhere you see these blue colors uh, or these belts of stronger winds, yeah, that's where we have a pretty strong upper level winds that would help to uh, kind of disperse any sort of tropical development. And you could definitely see those nearby. So any storm that even gets under an area of more favorable winds eventually runs into this and that helps to shred it apart. 
Now, as I've been mentioning though, this is all going to calm down somewhat at least as we start looking ahead towards this coming week and especially just through at least the first week of August and a lot of our models already beginning to hint that that could mean tropical development on the horizon. Here are the changes showing you with the European ensembles. The green here, that indicates uh, pockets of moisture beginning to work on in for uh, some of us. And uh, you can see a lot of that dry air still hanging around. But by the time we start getting into the early part of this coming week, it looks like some moisture content rolling off of Africa. And uh, that looks to uh, be in the form of a pretty robust uh, tropical wave coming through the ITCZ. Now, one question is, uh, can it latch on to that intertropical convergence zone and uh, keep shower activity and thunder? storm activity on a higher end scale to potentially form into a storm and you can see that on the ensemble see this little kink down here uh, right down here is that ITCZ and that's where you're going to want to watch for the center of circulation uh, to try to get going with this wave that we've been talking about for days now uh, this would be by this coming Thursday into Friday approaching the islands as that big pocket of moisture now at the same time upper level winds going to be calming down uh, as we start going into August so if this can find a window we've got warm enough ocean temperatures it's going to be bringing a lot of moisture if it gets some vorticity from that tropical convergence zone upper level winds could help maintain it this is uh, that same time frame between this thursday and friday and notice a pocket of below average wind shear right where that's going to track near the antilles near puerto rico into hispaniola uh, that general region is where we should be watching and then a lot of models as we go further into august here you start seeing through the first week uh, just showing relaxing wind shear in general Check this out by the 10th of August. Uh, yeah, most of the Atlantic is blue, meaning below average wind shear values, uh, which definitely could support heightened tropical activity. And combined with that Madden Julian oscillation getting into a phase that supports rising motion over the tropical Atlantic, uh, definitely some signs that uh, as we get into August, it could be uh, more active than July was for many of us. Now, let's take a look at some of those latest model runs. Do they form a storm? And if so, where do they take it? Latest GFS model run from this afternoon, starting at this uh, Friday, so about you know, a little less than a week from now. Here's some energy uh, that's associated with that wave of energy trying to get going and signs of vorticity, signs of life. The GFS then bringing that uh, into the Caribbean. And honestly, folks, doesn't do a whole lot with it on at least the operational run of the, GF, uh, the GFS model. And uh, this is a pretty common theme. Before these waves roll off of Africa, the models kind of go back and forth on deciding if they want to do anything with it. And uh, the GFS is no exception. Here's the Canadian model, uh, also brand new from this afternoon. I'll show it to you. Uh, starting around the same time frame this coming uh, Friday into Saturday, here's that piece of vorticity a little bit further north on the Canadian run. Uh, but tries to get it going into something, then runs into land interaction through the islands, Puerto Rico, and Hispaniola, and uh, kind of helps to keep that uh, vorticity spread apart and disrupted and doesn't develop it into a whole lot. Now, the European model run, also obviously one of the more reliable ones, uh, also showing that wave, that piece of energy. Here it is by next Friday towards the islands. Still not overly strong on this model as well, uh, but uh, kind of does the same thing. Brings it into the northern Antilles towards Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, keeping it disrupted. Uh, but eventually, once it gets towards the Bahamas uh, and then pulls up north towards Bermuda, tries to develop it into some sort of energy. You can see it there off the Carolina coastline, uh, basically uh, right over the island of of Bermuda, or at least close to it by the time we get uh, pretty far out from now. But uh, that's generally speaking where the models are taking this energy. Now, let me show you this. This is the brand new Google AI model, kind of the new kid on the block. It did great in testing this past year. Uh, let's see what it shows. And remember, this is similar to ensembles, and I'll show you the ensembles next. Uh, so every dot you see here on the map is where uh, a member of this model suite uh, has a storm developing. And then the colors that you see are associated with that category uh, list there on the left that show tropical storm all the way up to category five. All right, here we go. Friday, August 1st, a couple members now trying to develop this uh, here to the um, east of the islands. Most of them pull it north of the islands. Uh, so that's different than a lot of our operational runs. And you start to see more dots showing up as it gets north of the British Virgin Islands, north of Puerto Rico, north of Hispaniola. The Google AI model is indicating that conditions become more favorable and this begins to develop into something between seven and 10 days from now. And uh, you can see a lot of dots showing up. Also notice a lot a lot of dots off the southeast coastline uh, this same time frame 
Uh, the models are showing something uh, in that say, in that realm, uh, again, here east of the Carolinas. And eventually, as we get way out of time, all sorts of dots off the east coast, all sorts of ensemble members showing uh, a favorable pattern for a storm to get going, this being around 10 or so days from now. Uh, some get uh, homegrown activity, others get a system in the Atlantic, some do both, and uh, a varying strength on all of these from a tropical storm all the way up to even a strong hurricane potential. And you can see uh, all of those kind of moseying around the east coast by the time we get about a week or so into August. So definitely signs of life uh, on some of our models. The operational runs not as excited. The AI models starting to pick up on something. And as we take a look at the ensembles here, you'll notice uh, those two showing signs of life. GFS ensembles over the next 10 days definitely showing signs of life, uh, kind of two regions. Like I mentioned, we've got one in the main development region with this wave coming off of Africa and notice the spread. Some of them have a storm from almost cent um, or South America all the way up to even north of the island. So a lot of possibilities still here with that one. Obviously, we're going to have to keep watching it. Also, off the southeast coastline, I mentioned how relief is going to be on the way. Um, well, that relief is going to come in the form of a cold front. Uh, by the time we go on through about seven or so days from now, that parking off the Gulf Stream, uh, yeah, that also could try to develop. So you get the idea. The ensemble is also showing chances uh, that something could get going out here. The European ensembles even more excited, especially about this African wave. And you can kind of, uh, excuse me, you can kind of see a couple clusters. Uh, a lot of them develop it already out into the central Atlantic by the time we go into this week. Most of them bring it into the northern islands or just north of the islands, and then you kind of split. Some try to find a weakness in some ridging and try to pull it up uh, north quicker. Others bring it through the Bahamas and start going on a trajectory a little bit closer uh, to the southeastern United States, and at the same time, also uh, some sort of uh, tropical development maybe off uh, the southeast coast. So definitely plenty of watching in the tropics, things coming to life, a lot more more on our ensemble maps than we saw uh, about a week or two ago. So definitely signs that Atlantic hurricane season starting to get into gear here. And uh, I do expect August to at the very least be more active than July was. Uh, and uh, obviously I'll be here daily with updates to give you more information. So that's all for the tropics today. Let's swing on back home, take a look at that record breaking heat and when that relief is going to arrive. Back home, heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, heat watches. If it's a watch or advisory involving heat, it's probably on the map right now uh, as this big heat dome takes over for many of us. Now, we are getting some relief from the heat further north where we've got rain up into northern Illinois, Indiana, portions of Michigan, oh, oh, excuse me, Ohio, if I can uh, get the state out, and then into uh, Pennsylvania as well, where we've even got a couple of stronger storms up into that belt. Uh, further south, though, into the Carolinas, Virginia, Georgia, I mean, this is brutal stuff. This is about as bad as it gets uh, out here with uh, just uh, record-breaking levels of heat. Triple digits multiple days in a row for a lot of cities out here. Uh, and I know a lot of you are thinking, well, it's summertime. That's normal. Uh, it's really not. Now, upper 90s, yeah, sure, that happens pretty often. But triple digits days in a row uh, is just pretty unheard of. It's only happened, I think, once in recorded history in Charlotte. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll see how high we get today. But right now, it looks like triple digits going to be uh, pretty easy to come by uh, for the Piedmont of North Carolina in South Carolina here on this Saturday, and that could last days. Also, lower rain chances out here due to that high pressure. Uh, now, remember, we've got um, some flow out of the Gulf. We've got uh, that ring of fire to the north. So in other places, we are seeing some afternoon storms to help with this. But uh, for others, not so much. And that heat even up into the northern plains uh, where corn sweat combined with uh, a big ridge of high pressure is not what you want to see in the month of July. Now, speaking of that ridge of high pressure, uh, here it is. Uh, yeah, it's locked into place. All that orange, that's that big heat air mass uh, just locking in. Now, the good news, by the end of this coming week, a big blue blob, the blueberry on the map coming down from Canada and into the northeastern United States, that's good news. Uh, if I can try not to have my voice crack here right <laughs> at the end of the video. Ooh, that was bad. Uh, if uh, the blue blob, though, is going to come uh, give us some help uh, by the time... Uh, we get towards the end of this week. I know it doesn't look like a lot. It doesn't look like it's coming for a lot of folks, but trust me, uh, the Northeast especially going to get a big shot of dry air by the end of this week. And I think a lot of that even going to filter uh, into the Midwest and down into the Ohio Valley. So that'll be uh, when relief arrives towards the end of this work week. 
Before we get there, though, how hot is the mercury going to rise? Well, this is for tomorrow. Uh, and this is the forecast from the National Weather Service. Yeah, 103 in Columbia, 101 in Charlotte, 100 in Raleigh, uh, triple digits all through the Carolinas, one of the hottest places in the uh, country right now outside of the desert southwest. But uh, remember, they've got dry heat. We've got uh, a pretty humid heat, unfortunately. So definitely a very hot day there for your Sunday. And then I'll even show you Monday, uh, not looking much better. Still triple digits for a lot of us, and that keeps lasting even even into your Tuesday. You can see these uh, record high temperatures for a lot of us before eventually, I think by the end of this coming week, let's see here, let's pick, uh, we'll go Friday. Uh, this coming week, notice we start to cool down a lot more uh, as the front swings on through. Heck, highs only in the 70s in the northern plains by this coming Friday. So hold on. We're almost there. Hold on for dear life. Uh, not to say that it's going to feel like fall by any means uh, to start August, but it's going to feel a lot more like it than uh, it does right now. So uh, let's get through this week and then we'll find some relief on the other side. Uh, let's talk about rainfall chances and uh, who's going to see it and where uh, or how much we could see of it uh, as we go ahead through about the next seven to 10 days. Here are rainfall totals now through this coming Thursday. Notice not a lot. Uh, now, we were going to get, again, pockets of rain on the northern tier of this uh, ring of fire. So uh, the Ohio Valley, especially kind of north of there, uh, into the Corn Belt and back towards portions of Nebraska, into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. Pockets of showers and storms. Also showers and storms down near the Gulf where uh, continued activity continues to linger. You'll notice, though... As we go into this coming week and notice the map kind of explode with precipitation uh, values down here, especially towards the Carolinas, uh, into Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, yeah, higher in rain chances definitely on the way after about seven days. The reason for that is this relief that's on the way. You'll notice on our muggy meter, absolutely crazy heat and humidity through the early part of this week. This is Monday. Uh, boy, oh boy, dew points in the 80s. Yeah, not good. In fact, dangerous levels of heat there uh, for a lot of folks. Then we get to Thursday. Here's Friday. And uh, you notice a lot drier air. Dew points all the way down into the 30s up into Vermont and uh, into New Hampshire. Uh, now, that might actually feel a little bit like fall. The question still being, how far south does that get? And wherever a boundary sets up here, kind of between uh, still muggy weather down south and nicer weather to the north, if that gets draped over uh, portions of the southeast, uh, that could mean increasing rainfall chances. And if it gets draped over the Atlantic, that's why we could see tropical development in that same time frame uh, there off the southeast coastline. So definitely an active pattern ahead, a lot to keep up with, and a lot that we'll continue discussing in these daily uploads. Alrighty, folks. Well, this might have been a bit of a spitfire video. If so, apologize. I'm running a little bit late uh, today in my routine, so I uh, had to make this one quick. But uh, I think a quick video is probably probably better than no video. So with that said, I appreciate it. I'll see some of y'all on TV tonight. And uh, if not, then I'll see you tomorrow with another video update.